All right, you. We got something for you today. So I have never built a reverse proxy. I always generally knew how they worked. Uh, if you're not familiar with the reverse proxy, you use them all the time. But it's going to be a client makes a request out to a server. This is like my understanding before today. And when you go to the server, the server isn't just going to be directly to a machine. Instead, you kind of hit a, like for the most part, you hit a load balancer. Obviously, not everyone needs a load balancer, and this is always overdone for so many projects, but you hit a load balancer, and then the load balancer picks the machine that you actually want to go to, and then the, requ the request response kind of happens. And so that means if I send a request, it goes over to the server. The server then takes that request and actually pipes it across this server all the way over to the proxy server. Then the proxy server responds and sends the response back through and then it is copied from this proxy server out to the client and so that's like a reverse proxy and i never actually tried to build one myself i always just thought it was kind of very complicated and all that i never actually attempted to do it because this was always kind of my mental model of what's happening but that just seems too simple and that can't be it but it turns out that's pretty much it and so i built one out myself right here today just having some fun and so all i do is i create an origin server right and the origin server just takes any tcp connection in reads the bytes to it and just writes it back out right your standard kind of echo server by the way i did build my own pretty logging and my pretty logging is pretty dang amazing i'll show you here in a moment if you want me to make a video say make video about pretty logging right it's actually pretty cool and so then i also made a proxy server which does pretty much the same thing it gets in a connection and then it creates a proxy connection out, and then I run it. The proxy connection is pretty easy. I actually connect to my origin server, and so that way I have my connection to the client, I have my connection to the origin server, and all I do is I just copy. I didn't know how to do this well, so I just kind of have a, a cancel context come in so I can cancel. If any of these fail or any of them close, then it's time to just close the whole thing down, close all the connections, and we're done. So that's all that I was doing right there. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but hey, it worked out really, really well. And so I just get a new connection, and then I just pipe the connections in data to the connection to the origin server, and then the origin server back to the data going out, and this is effectively what I get with that origin uh, with that origin server. So if I go like this, go run, um, go run, let's run the origin server. I'm going to get a random port. I got random port 33949. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to do uh, port 37231. And I'm going to go netcat, and I will just echo this out. And you'll notice that immediately it closes it down, but it gets the thing that I sent in right back out. And if you look at the logs, you can see that my dummy server got a reverse proxy test, created all the connections, got the server address, and then a new connection came in. And if you look at my actual, you know, my actual origin, ser uh, my actual origin server, I got the connection data in. Here's the data, hello world, for ID zero, and then it just closed down the connection. So it's just like it went in echoed it back out, closed it down, the whole thing closed all the way through, and the data just went back out the other side. And you can see it right here. So if I echo, echoed a whole bunch, and you'll see I made a whole bunch of connections and just echoed everything right back out again. I thought it was pretty cool, and I was surprised at how easy it was. But not only that, uh, I also did a little, uh, what's it called, port 33949. I also built it in Rust, just because I haven't used Rust in so long. I just kind of wanted to try it out again. Same thing. Uh, oh, whoopsie daisies. I forgot I hard-coded Rust. What did I hard-code Rust to? What did I hard-code Rust to? Um, it's 7878. I actually just copied something off the internet, so I didn't even hard-code it. That's just... I just did that. There you go. You can see it happens again. Yay. I'm just printing everything out. Not as beautiful of logging, which, by the way, beautiful logging in Rust is much harder than beautiful logging in Go. I just want to throw that out there. Okay. But it's the exact same code again. So if I go back here, it's the exact same stuff where all I'm doing is just opening up a connection, doing bi-directional copy, and calling it a day. And like that's that's it. It's just ins and outs. And this was surprisingly cool. And the reason why I'm doing all this and all this stuff that I'm telling you is that I actually want to create my own game servers. And so right now I've created something called matchmaking or my first version of it. I don't think it's quite there yet, but all it does is it uses squeal light to be able to tell what servers do I have available and where should I send connections to that way, the client, which is going to be NeoVim makes a request up here. This responds back down here with where to go right now. That's just an IP address. But instead, now I can change it to, say, a URL with a UUID as a parameter or however I decide to do that. And then my proxy, my reverse proxy, can actually just take that information and find the correct game server to go to. 
and start filling up those game servers. And so that way I actually have a scalable matchmaking and a scalable reverse proxy to the game servers. And so that makes me pretty happy. Like I've kind of, I guess I kind of did it. And now all I need to do is kind of finish this bad boy out to where it actually uses the, you know, the matchmaking data and the squeal data to actually determine what servers to go to. And we will get the full nine yards. I will be able to have my whole matchmaking experience. So I'm actually pretty stoked up about that. And I must say that this has been a fun adventure. I have learned a lot. It's always really good to kind of build your own stuff. And if you haven't seen any of the stuff I've been doing, I was able to get, uh, let's see, Cat Air. I was effectively able to create a million connections on and off to my game matching, uh, my game, my matchmaking games over and over again without anything crashing all the way up to a million connections. So I'm pretty happy about that. I don't know why I didn't just go like this, tail her. So I finally, it finally died at the very end, right? But still, I got pretty far. And I got to figure this one out. Like somehow I have connections added is not like a thing. And there's like an invalid int. Something has gone wrong. And it seems to happen at the million mark. So my guess is that it's probably not too hard to figure out where I went wrong here. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, there we go. We did it. We built it. It feels good. I feel good about this. And I say all these things to you because it's not what I'm building right here that really matters. Yeah, build something fun. Uh, super cool. Got to do my own matchmaking. I was able to spawn and create servers here. I can actually even show show to you. Um, let's find this thing. There it is. It just runs, and you can see it's adding 100 connections. So you can see it every I, – I, I make my servers full after 18 connections. And so you, you can see that it's just creating more and more servers. These are just local processes. So all I need to do is just do the Fly.io API, and I'll be able to actually even create these with Fly.io. So it becomes pretty cool. And you can see like this, the connections are all dropping because I'm removing connections and adding connections and removing connections. And they're all kind of staying and flying and flowing, which is pretty cool. And now that this thing returns to zero, you'll notice here soon, this thing's actually going to uh, become idle. And when it becomes idle, then the server could be killed in a little bit afterwards. If we get to idle, oh, oh we didn't get to idle. It got filled back up. But after like 30 seconds, it becomes idle and then kills the server. I don't know. I thought it was a really fun experiment. Now I got every, like I got all the pieces together to actually build games in Vim that can auto scale. And I built all the auto scaling and now I just need to map it to fly IO. I don't know. I thought this was super fun. And for me, the part that I like the most is that I got to build it all. And yeah, this will be a pain in the ass to maintain and all that. And it's probably much easier to, you know, learn modern technologies. But I also got to create this all myself. And for me, that's the more important part is because at the end of the day, I want to be really competent. And I personally find that just reading about topics is great. I can draw the boxes and arrows, but implementing the things myself, hand rolling that thing out and getting it done makes me feel confident, makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. And for me, that's worth way, way more than just drawing boxes and arrows. So I hope that you build something wild. Do what I do and just go build something. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the best ever built item. It's the fact that you built it and your knowledge went from boxes and arrows into concrete implementation. Hey, the name? <laughs> the name is the Primogen.